This is the biggest question that humans or everybody should be asking. And it's critical. I, I think this is what we should be teaching in school. You have to learn what do you want in your life? Rise and shine. It's espresso time. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I am not a morning person. I'm not. But when you start your day with a routine that inspires you, like watch one of these videos, it will change your life. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee, know that I believe in you, and get ready for a shot of Espresso with Deepak Chopra. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. But when you realize that all your name, your form, and everything you see is provisional, two things happen to some people. They have immediate, what we could only metaphorically call the dark night of the soul. They go into a deep depression because everything they thought was real is no longer real, including their own name, form, body, and mind. Some people get so scared that they have a bad trip. Mm. Some people cross that threshold and discover nirvana or <laughs> enlightenment. And they say, wow, I thought I was, I was squeezed into the volume of a body in the span of a lifetime, but I'm a timeless being that can morph myself into any experience, including the human experience, which is amazing. But the human experience is also that which causes existential depression. So the causes of human suffering, since you brought it up, are brought up in Eastern wisdom traditions as number one, you suffer because you don't know who you are. You confuse yourself with your body-mind experience. Number two, you grasp and cling at experiences which are evanescent and transitory and dreamlike. You say, what happened to your childhood? It's over. What happened to yesterday? It's over. What happened to five minutes ago? It's over. What happens to these words? By the time you hear them, they don't exist. So, you know, Wittgenstein, the German philosopher said, we are asleep, our life is a dream, but once in a while we wake up enough to know that we are dreaming. So what do you wake up to? When you cross this threshold, you wake up to your true self, which uh, is not body or mind, but the awareness in which that experience is happening. So grasping and clinging at a dream is the second cause of human suffering. The third is uh, being afraid of anything that's unpleasant, pain abandonment, being treated by someone uh, not respectfully. So that's, you know, there's aversion to certain experiences. Third cause of suffering. Fourth is identifying, which is related to it, with your ego identity. And fifth is the fear of death. Now they're all connected. They're all the same fear. And they are not knowing who you are. This is the biggest question that humans, or everybody should be asking. Who am I? What am I? Am I the changing experience of this body, which is a perceptual activity? Am I the experience of the changing mind or the changing personality? Because you don't have the same personality when you were a kid or maybe even 10 years ago. Mm. What is it at the basis of this? When you start that reflective self-inquiry, ask yourself, who am I? What do I want? What is my purpose? What am I grateful for? go into the stillness of meditation, you have what wisdom traditions have called revelation, revealed truth. Now, you know, that sounds very grand. I would say just call it insight. You know, meditation, mindfulness, uh, awareness of body, awareness of mind, awareness of mental space, awareness of the web of relationship, awareness with that which we call the universe. It leads you ultimately to the awareness of awareness. And when you discover that, that's nirvana. The number one question that I get asked most consistently across my videos, my social media, events, coaching, the number one question that I get asked is a variation of how do I find my purpose? How do I find my passion? How do I know what I'm supposed to be doing? It's such an important question because until you figure that out, what are you doing with life? 
if you don't know what your purpose is, what are you waking up and doing every day? What are you waking up and living? It's no wonder why people are depressed, unhappy, suicidal, feel unworthiness, don't have any self-love. It's because you don't have direction over what you're doing in your entire life. Like if that's what you're struggling with right now, it's the most important thing to figure out first before continuing on doing the life that you know you don't like. The answer is actually not that complicated. You don't have to go and journal for 10 years on top of a mountain before you figure it out. The answer is in a three-step process that I wrote about, and it's called Built to Serve, the book. And before you can figure out your purpose, you have to first figure out what I call your who. So I'm gonna walk you through the three steps, super powerful. If you get this, it could be one of the most important life-changing decisions, life-changing realizations, revelations that you ever make in your life. And it's critical. I think this is what we should be teaching in school. Imagine people coming out of school, figuring out their purpose, knowing what they want to be doing with their life. How much uncertainty is there in, in the system, in school, in university, in the workforce, in entrepreneurship? Like people are, are grown adults and still don't know what their purpose, what their calling, what their passion is. How do you expect to live a great life if you don't know what that is? So the three steps. Before you figure out your passion and your purpose, you have to figure out your who. Your who is who you are. Your single most important core value. Who are you as a human? So for me, mine is belief. Everybody's got one. You think about what is your most important core value over all the others. You've yet to pick one single most important core value. And I walk through how to actually do it and build the serve. But if you think about all the things that make you excited, happy, come alive, who your favorite teacher was, what your favorite movie was, what your favorite books are, why you love a channel like this, what is it? What are the things in your life that make you come alive? And then trying to draw a, a line, some kind of pattern between those things. So for me, it's belief. My parents would always teach me, I'm Evan Castrilli Carmichael, I can do anything I believe that I can. My favorite movie is Sea Biscuit, which is this racehorse that's too small and a jockey that's too big and an and a owner that had no money. Um, my favorite teacher is Madame Farr, who taught me uh, in high school French. And she just, why? It's not because she taught me French, it's because she made me a better human. Think about your favorite teachers because they made, made you a better human. It's not because they taught you French or math or, or science or something. They made you better, they made you think they made you reflect, they gave you guidance, help, love, support that other people didn't give you, right? So if you can draw some kind of parallel between all the things that made you come alive, feel happy, feel joyful, feel alive, what, what's the common thread? So for me, it's belief, for Nina, it's care, for everybody else, it's something else. It might be freedom or love or gratitude or excitement or appreciation or belonging or extraordinary. Everybody's got something. So instead of worrying about you look at companies, they have a list of their 13 core values. Don't worry about 13 core values, pick one. What is the single most important core value to you as a human? Spend some time with it. It's really, 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 really important. Whenever you're not happy in life, it's because you are not living in congruence with your core values. If I ever, I'm not happy, it's because I don't believe in myself enough or believe in the work I'm doing enough. Therefore, I'm unhappy. That's great awareness. If you're not happy right now, it's because you're not living your, your who. You're not living your most important core value. So you have to figure that out. It's, it's the, the most, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, this is a human thing. You figure that out, you have a compass and, and a roadmap for the rest of your life. So if it takes you two weeks to do it, that's a two weeks pretty well invested in my opinion. I think it's the single most important exercise you can ever do in your life. So that's your who. Next goes to your why. And your why is your purpose. Your why comes from your pain. Your purpose comes from your pain. Whatever you struggled with the most as a human is the thing that you want to help other people through. So whatever the most painful moment was for you, emotional pain, not physical pain, like, like I broke my neck, but, but emotional pain. When did you feel worthless? When did you feel hopeless? When did you feel small? When did you feel insignificant? When did you feel like you didn't matter? You want to serve. Your purpose, everybody, your purpose is to serve somebody else. This is hardwired into us as humans. You want to serve and help other people. You know how good that feels. 
but there's a difference between holding the door open for somebody or buying somebody a, a cup of coffee in line. There's a difference between that and, and actually living your purpose. The people who you'll love helping the most are the people who currently are who you used to be. Think about that moment that's the most painful experience in your life emotionally. Recognize that there are millions of people right now, millions, who are struggling with the exact same thing. And they have nobody. They have no hope. They don't see a way out. They don't know how to get better. And they don't think it's even possible until you come along. And you show them that it's possible. And you show them a way out. And you show them that life can be better. And you show them they don't have to stay stuck where they are. That, that kind of emotional connection you can make to somebody and you see their eyes light up and for the first time maybe in their life they actually have hope and inspiration that their life can change and that happened because you because of a conversation with you that is a, a, a drug to be addicted to for the rest of your life that will never get old and you'll be 120 years old still caring about that thing your who and your why don't change i'll be believing in people for the rest of my life, if not more than I do right now. And you will too, for whatever your who is. Okay, so your who and your why are constant. Your single most important core value and your purpose. They won't, they don't change. And that's great. That's fantastic awareness again, because again, if you're ever unhappy, you're living out of alignment with your who and your why. And now you know why. So you can fix it. You can get back into alignment really quickly. Instead of just feeling like you're unhappy and you're out of alignment, you don't know with alignment with what? Just that there's something better out there that you could do, some greater calling for you, but you don't know what it is. This is how you figure it out. This is the process. These are the step-by-step -step tactics that you can use to actually go and create a blueprint for a better life for yourself. Your who, your why. The last step is the how. The how is how did you get out of it? So how you got out of the hole that you were in is a recipe you can teach other people. My why is to help entrepreneurs because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur. It was the lowest point in my life. I felt worthless. I felt, I felt defeated. I felt like it was never gonna work out. I felt like there was no hope. I felt like I sucked as a human when I started my first business. So that's why I make these videos. That's why I do what I do. I try to help other entrepreneurs not struggle, feel as isolated, as alone, as by themselves as I did. I wish I had this content when I was getting started. I still make my videos for 19 year old Evan who's doing his first, his first business, first real business. The how is how you got out of it. So how did I get out of the hole that I was in? I modeled success. I looked at what worked for Bill Gates in his software business. I applied it to my software business, started to get results. Anytime I didn't know what to do next, I modeled success. I don't know what to do, I model success. New problem, no answer, model success. Find someone who's done it, model their success. And that's what I've been doing for the past 21 years, is modeling success and then sharing it. Why do I have Deepak Chopra on the channel, Oprah Winfrey on the channel, Elon Musk on the channel? Is yes, to be inspired by them and motivated by them, but to, to model their success, to say, here's how they solve the problem. Here's how they see the world. If I adopted some of that mindset, some of those strategies, maybe I can solve that problem too. And I do it for myself, but I also then share it with you guys. And hopefully you learn something in the process as well. As I learn, you learn, <laughs> hopefully. If you're still here, you're probably learning something. I, I appreciate you for, for being here. So how you got out of the hole is the thing you're gonna teach other people. So when you figure those three things out, that's why I wrote Built to Serve, because we, the book goes in much more detail how to actually how to do it. But you figure out your most important core value, your who. You figure out your purpose, your why. And then you figure out the process you use to get out of the hole you're in, your how. That becomes something you can then teach to other people, help other people through. And then the last section in the book is about how to actually make money doing it, because if you don't learn to make money from your purpose, your purpose only stays as this evening, uh, and weekend side hobby, meanwhile you're working a job that you hate, instead of it actually being your life's calling, where you're spending the vast majority of your time, uh, where you can then build a team, hire, expand, grow, have a lot more happiness, and impact a lot more lives. Right? You figure that stuff out. Life doesn't change today. 
the awareness of a potential life can give you the hope and the strategy and the plan to make that better life for yourself. Life doesn't change right now today, but at least you have a template, a roadmap, a guide for you to work towards building that better life for yourself. That's one of the most important exercises you can ever do in your life. If you haven't done it yet, I highly encourage you to do it. Uh, and keep me posted with your progress. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? When you watch a video and you get motivated, the science says you have a 35% chance of following through. That's not enough. <laughs> But when you write down what time, what place, and how you're going to actually take action on it, you jump to 91% chance of following through. And when you have public accountability and you commit to other people that you're gonna do it, it jumps to 95% that you will follow through. So I want that for you, Believe Nation. I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. You have to learn what do you what in your life we have so much influence coming at us that we are so lost we don't know what we want to do because we don't spend enough time with ourselves you have to learn to shut off a phone shut off a computer shut off a tv and it's okay to sit in a room by yourself in a chair and just think about you where i want to be where, where do i see myself tomorrow the next year the next year from that and it takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to do that nowadays because you want to be so, so attached to everything. You want to be so caught up with the world. The world's moving too fast. The world's moving so fast that you're trying to keep up to the point where you lose yourself in the world. So you have to take that time and go to that dark place in your mind and discover who you are. If you want more Deepak Chopra, check out the one-on-one -on -one interview I did recently on my main channel. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Every thought you have is a magical lie. How do we live a life with zero physical or mental weakness?